Academy of Dallas Fort Worth. This is envisioned as a platform for the uh, youth performers uh, who are amongst us, these highly talented performers uh, who uh, might be having some unique perspectives. This is a, um, a discussion, a conversation, a slightly casual style of coming together where and they explore topics related to Indian classical arts. So in the past, we have had uh, wonderful discussions going on on this uh, program. And today too, I'm very happy to have two super accomplished, super, super smart young ladies here with me. And uh, this is Rohita Kaimal and uh, Aishwarya Ravin. Please join me in welcoming them. And I thank you so much. And I'll now hand it over to the participants. Aisha, you're on mute. Namaskaram, everybody. Sorry, I was on mute. Thank you so much, Jai for those kind words. Um, my name is Aishwarya Ravindran. For those of you that don't know me, I am a classically trained Bharatanatyam dancer, and I have the good fortune of learning from Srimati Madhushri Setaraman for the last decade. I am also a classically trained Carnatic singer, and my guru is Sri Venkat Raman Subramanian, fondly known as Sri Violin Venkat in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. I'm also a Murdangam student, a disciple of Sri Ganesh Devarajan. Before I hand it over to Rohita, I want to thank IFA DFW for this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. And I look forward to discussing with you, Rohita, here today. Thank you, Aishu. Same here. Um, Namaskaram, everyone. My name is Rohita Kaimo, and I'm the disciple of Srimati Vani Ishura of Elora Center for Performing Arts based in Dallas, Texas. Um, I've been training in Bharatanatyam for the past 18 years. Apart from dance, I've also been training in Carnatic music for the past 13 years under Srimati Shubha Ramanan. Unfortunately, due to unexpected circumstances, Pranamya is unable to attend our event today. I was very much looking forward to watching Pranamya dance as well as hearing her talk, so really missing her here today. Um, but looking forward to chatting with you, Rohita. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so moving on with our topic for today, uh, we'd like to spend some time discussing the Tilana. What is the Tilana? Why is it an interesting topic? So Tilanas were believed to have emerged during the post-Trinity period in the 18th century, originating from Taranas, some also claiming origins to Karana Prabandhas. It was later incorporated into dance by the Tanjore Quartet when they framed the Margam format. Beautifully said, Rohita, you're exactly right. And to your point about Taranas, when I was doing my research, um, for those of you that don't know, I had to do some research myself. Tarana is a composition in Hindustani classical vocal. Um, it is very similar to a Tilana in that it uses certain words and syllables that are meaningless, but still beautiful and rhythmic. Um, but the syllables are slightly different. They're odani, todani, tadim would be the similarity. And there's kind of, you know, those. And, and the theory is that it originated uh, from Sufi poetry that came in during uh, Persian and Arabic influence in India. Um, of course, just a theory. Um, and of course, now Tilanas are indulged in at the end of a concert or a performance, typically. Um, a dancer or a singer concludes with an energetic Tilana um, uh, and then following into the Mangalam. Yeah, I, uh, I loved your point about <clears throat> it um, being influenced by Sufi poetry. Um, so there's also the theory with the Tarana. It's um, believed to have been like a mixture of North and South Indian classical music. Right. Um, which led to the origin of Karana Prabandhas. And then from there, it, it evolved into the Tilana that we uh, see nowadays in present times. Right. And now speaking about the Tilana here and, and thinking about in as, as us being both singers and dancers, I, I like to explore Tilana and Carnatic music versus Tilana um, in dance. And of course, within the lens of a Murdangist, uh, and of course, you as a Natavanar, um, you know, the similarities that are 
obvious to me in dance and parte is that one, it is typically at the end of a margam or a kacheri, kind of what I mentioned before. Um, it's brisk in nature. So the dancer or singer is uh, the layam builds over time, uh, which ultimately ends in a very you know fast tempo towards the end of the piece. Um, what I especially notice as a when I'm performing both singing and dance with a dilana, I find that the sentiment is pretty similar. And by that I mean, you know, when I'm concluding a piece, I feel this sense of accomplishment and a sense of joy that overcomes me. And a dilana is when all of that almost explodes. I recall looking at a past performance of mine where it was the dilana, and my smile was almost unrecognizable. I couldn't recognize who that person was. And I think it's because of the euphoria that almost hits when you're when you're dancing a dilana. Would you would you agree, Rohita? Absolutely. I totally agree with your point on the sentiment. Um, I think uh, from the audience perspective, when you're watching any artist, singer or dancer on stage, when you hit the tilana, you can definitely see the pure joy in their, you know, their body language and their smile. And it's, it's just so beautiful to watch. Absolutely, absolutely. And then my final similarity that I, I noticed is the structure is is very similar. So by that, of course, it starts with the Pallavi with syllables, then it goes on to the Anupallavi, which builds the ragam, explores the ragam further. And then finally, there is a Sahityam portion or a Charanam that's dedicated to a deity. So that's kind of where the Rasa comes out of whatever god you are kind of uh, portraying. And then the ragam kind of influences that choice as well. Then finally ending in a either fast jati or fast nutta conclusion. Yes, uh, in between music and dance, I feel the base structure is relatively the same. Um, however, in dance, obviously we have, the Pallavi is expanded more. So you have the mayor divas, depending on what style, you know, you're performing, you have mayor divas your core, and your corvees, uh, a couple, multiple. And that's all in the Pallavi. So as a singer singing for a dance performance, you're going to have to repeat the same line, you know, multiple times. So that's why you've seen in like Aranyatrams or live performances, like with live music, usually what happens is the singer and the instrumentalist will usually take turns singing, going through the Pallavi. Um, I and can't then, imagine being a singer at an Aranyatram, right? It's so many repetitions. So I completely agree with you. Yeah, and then uh, after that, the Pallavi, then we have the Anupallavi and Charanam and Swara Sahityam. And uh, also, I noticed that some people have a certain preference to Tilanas based off of, you know, which composer um, they want to choose or whatever ragam they feel more comfortable presenting or the Talam complexity as well. You're exactly right. Um, I, I would love to spend some time talking through the composer choice and uh, maybe dive deep into Lalgudi Sir here might be a good choice. Um, you know, when I when I learn singing or dance uh, versions of Lalgudi Sir's uh, compositions, it's always such an interesting experience. Everything almost catches you by surprise. Um, I'd love to demonstrate uh, singing the Behag Dilana and then uh, maybe explore it a little bit more of what I took away um, and then perhaps show something on the Murdenam as well. Madhavan Maruga Malari Nipadame Gati Gana Panil De 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 Nidaye Puri Ga Tiral Nidal Nidama Pari Budan Harulvai Nidaye Puri Ga Tiral Nidal Nidama Pari Budan Harulvai Nidaye Puri Ga Tiral Nidal Nidama Pari Budan Harulvai Nidaye and here, typically, the violin will accompany. 
Dim da na 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 dim, jalu ta dim, para ma pa, dimi ta dim, gamani da ta ga jalu pa ni ka di da na 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 da na dim, dim da na 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 dim, jalu ta dim, para ma pa, dimi ta dim, gamani da ta ga jalu pa ni ka di da na 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 da na dim, dim da na 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 dim, jalu ta dim, para ma pa, dimi ta dim. Gamani da ta ke janu bani da di da na 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 da na di di da na 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 di janu da di pa da ma ba di mi ta di gamani da ta ke janu bani da di da na 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 da na di di da na 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 di janu da di ma di ga di ga gamani da ta ke janu bani da di da na 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 da na di ka ma ba ni sa ga di di mi ta ke da di ki ta jom di ta di ta ga da di ki ta jom di ta di ta di ki ta jom di ta ga ma ba ni sa You have such a beautiful voice. I she was so beautiful the way you demonstrated it. Thank you so much, Rohita. That means so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, and so here, just to explore it a little bit. Um, so, so first, the musicality always oh, that Lalgadi Sir does, and not just isolated to this dilana, where he leaves a portion for the violinist to accompany, gives almost a a Western feel to it. It's very flowy. Behag itself is a very light ragam. So to to really pander to that and really nail that, I think Lalgadi Sir, it, it's a fantastic composition. It's almost universally known that a, that a violinist. Kind of accompanies the singer, so you, you don't necessarily even have to tell the violinist. Um, and then, of course, the kind of breakdown of the math here is what's interesting to me. Just taking the Pallavi, right? <laughs> So what he's done is this is Dishranade, Adi Talam, of course, uh, Adi Talam and Jatishranade has four aksharams per beat. This is, of course, three. So eight times three would be 24 is our playing ground. And so what Lalwadi Sir does here is takes it on the last, the third beat of the middle finger and adds a korve in the palavi. So it would be ta da na jarnu ta dhi mi ta 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 ki ta ta ki ta ta ki dhi mi ta ki ta ta ki ta ta ki dhi mi ta ki ta ta ki ta ta and so the reason I changed the syllables here is typically a dancer or a murdangist likes to fill up their beats. Um, and, and of course, the Natavangam would kind of follow suit as well. And so here, the murdangist would likely play not following exactly the singer, um, but for dance would follow the dancer. So something like this, perhaps. And so that last one was a little bit more embellished, given a dancer would probably add a couple didates here and there to briskly end um, on the aradi every time the pallavi is repeated. That was a beautiful demonstration, you and Uti Murdangam, how you explained how the pattern, uh, how Lal Godisar composed, you know, all the intricate patterns in the swaram. Uh, similar to the similar to the uh, Behag Tilana, uh, another Tilana that I found very interesting is uh, Lal Gudi Sir's Mon Tilana. It was actually one of the very first Tilanas that I had learned um, in music. Um, I, I'd love to demonstrate it first and then talk about uh, a few of the interesting points that I found. Please, looking forward to it. Thank you. 
That was so beautiful, Rohit. I especially enjoyed the chatteram there. You you just nailed the abhinaya. I think it was just so beautiful to hear you sing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so a few of the points that I wanted to, um, although I only sang the chatteram and swaram, the in the last swaram is where you see more of the patterns, the rhythmic patterns that are uh, used in in this composition. So um, you know, being a deshadi tilana, first of all, it starts. Right. Uh, the very last pattern, he actually begins, um, he phrases a pattern after five beats. So I'll demonstrate that really quickly. So. And in that pattern, it's the three variations that come. It's the kalakramana, the spacing of the beats, it's, it's the exact same. It's just the way each of, uh, how he splits up the beats, right? It's the same total number of beats. So the first one he does, and the second one, it's, um, and the last one, complete opposite. I just found that so um, interesting. It just it's a very fun way for the singer, even you know, being a dancer, just to recognize those patterns, and you just automatically feel like. <clears throat> dancing and then filling up those beats. You're exactly right. It almost brings a smile to your face. The the concerts and performances I enjoy the most is when you see that that connection happen where the the singer stops for a second and says like sabash or bale, which is it, it just shows that you know beats can add so much when you're in your dancing. So I completely agree. Absolutely. And another point, um, uh, a little before that last uh, swaram is uh, when we do tam takadim tajam tam takadim tajam tajanu tadim tadom tajam tanam tatam. If you actually just take that line and do it on summa, it all the major be, uh, syllables they come on the summa. So tam takadim tajam tajanu tadim tato tajam tanam tata. Right. But the beauty that uh, Sir brings into this piece is he starts after six beats. So, that was another uh, beautiful like way he just brought 
you know, rhythmic patterns into his galanas. Beautifully, beautifully demonstrated, Rohita. I, I completely agree. The Deshadi almost adds a feel to it. It, it. it aids us as dancers and choreographers to be able to kind of bring that energy to it. So beautifully, beautifully said. Thank you. Um, and uh, going off of the structure of a tilana, most people, um, it's easy to recognize that a tilana uses syllables as nam, drit, tom, tadirana, right? So, so usually you won't see these syllables being used in you know, most other pieces, even if it's in a um, jat or in a jati swaram, it's more of a, you know, swaram based item. Here it's all just using syllables, you know, that are similar to a percussion, a mridangam. Um, what do you think, Aishu, about that? Beautiful. I, I find it that Natvanars have, you know, it's such a struggle to be a dancer as well as a Natvanar when you're on stage. It's, it's, you're almost wearing different caps. You want to kind of follow every beat that the dancer is doing. But I find that the beauty in Natvangam is the silence almost, knowing when to punctuate and when not. Do you find that to be a ta challenge as well, Rohita? Yes, yeah, sometimes. Um, another thing is, uh, you know, when you're giving, doing Natvangam for a dance performance, you're watching them in especially if you know the item, it's so hard to not fill up the beats because, you know, as a dancer, your feet just automatically move, you know, you just want to fill up all the beats. And, but for when you're giving that to you don't want to take away the beauty of the dancer's footwork or the beats that Mridangist is filling in. So most times um, there, I mean, uh, having said that, there are times where we do fill it in. So if it's like, you know, an Ushi Adava, so without that, but like giving those pauses, I just feel like there's so much more beauty in that, you know, few seconds of silence in the pause. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the silence is, is the most challenging part when you kind of have played every role on the stage on the mayday. But I think it also lends to the silence lends to so much more. Uh, it, it might be counterintuitive, but I, I completely, I completely understand. Um, challenge Sorry, the challenge would be to find that true balance between all, you know? Precisely. You're completely right. Um, another kind of going off on the structure of the Dilana, uh, you know, along with the, the syllables that punctuate the rhythms, I think of it, although there is rhythmic complexity, um, there's also an Abhinaya piece to the Dilana that people tend to forget that I find to be incredibly beautiful. Uh, dilana typically falls in my head and under the bucket of Nutta pieces. And of course, there's t uh, lots of Jati, there's lots of intense uh, kind of Nutta demand that, that it requires. Um, but of course, there's also the charanam, and sometimes the charanam can be long. Uh, I would say the Mantilana, of course, is a very standalone charanam, um, beautiful scope for expressions and abhinaya. And of course, the ragam kind of lends to that abhinaya rasa coming out. And one anecdote, of course, when I was learning the Kadana Kudukalam Tilana, um, there's, there's a section that was choreographed by Srimati Pradesh Nigovind where she says, Vada Namade Viri Sene, with your face, won't you look at me? And so the dancer's asking, won't you look at me? And the, the choreography is adapted to Krishna, then looking, and then with your lips, won't you smile at me? And of course that same Krishna looks and gives her a light smile. And I remember learning that expression as a young child um, and it really resonated with me and, and it stuck with me of how Krishna would stand, how would he look down how would he smile and kind of give his blessings in, a, in his playful way? And of course, I learned that Abhinaya in Atilana of all places, and, but it's so transferable and that rasa is so kind of applicable to not just Atilanas, but other pieces as well. Beautifully explained. Um, going off of that, I wanted to touch on the structural differences between different styles, the Banis. Um, I mean, I've been taught in the Kalakshitra Bani, so speaking from what I've observed in the Tilana that I have learned, um, there is a strict uh, strict structure to the Tilana. So in the Pallavi itself, you have the Meyadavas and Korvays, but most times it will be, you know, you have two to three Meyadavas, two to three Korvays, and then you have an Ushi segment in the, uh, in the middle to divide the Pallavi and Anupallavi. Then we hit the Anupallavi and Charanam, which are not elaborated as much as you were saying in the 
um, piece that you just spoke about. So it's a couple of lines of the Anupallavi demonstrated and same with the Charanam and then sah uh, the Swaram following the Sahityam. Um, that's one thing I've noticed and um, I would love to demonstrate a Silana that I've uh, learned in Hamsanadam. Kanda uh, Thalam, which has been uh, composed and choreographed by Professor C.V. Chandrasekhar sir, which is my guru's guru. Please, looking forward to it, Rohita. Yeah. 
Rohita, that was absolutely stunning. If I may, I, I, I wish I was there and watching you in person. It was so beautiful to watch. There was so much stillness, so much grace, so much energy that you brought to that Dilana. Of course, that Agam also so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing this. Oh, thank you. Of course. And so I think, you know, you talked about the structural differences between Barney's. Um, and, and I think it's it's so beautiful to see Kalakshetra has such a rich history. You see the, whether it's as simple as how Tattumetta is done or the structure of a Tilana itself. Um, and of course, this choreograph by your Paramaguru and then down to Vani Antin, of course, to you. It's such a beautiful thing that, that stands to the test of time. Um, on that note, I'd love to kind of explore the creativity aspect and demonstrate that. Um, so the Tilana that I would love to demonstrate here is the Sindhu Bhairavi Tilana. And of course, when, when I say Sindhu Bhairavi, um, everyone assumes the Lal Gudi Sir's beautiful, com, com, beautifully composed Sindhu Bhairavi Tilana. This is not that. This is a uh, beautiful Tilana composed by Srimati Dwaraki Krishna Swami, who is a female lyricist and flautist as well as composer. She's composed many songs for classical Indian uh, dance, uh, specifically Mohini Atam, Bharatanatyam, and Kuchipuri. Um, this is very special to me, this Dilana. When Mother Sriyanti had chosen this for me, it almost felt that it was tailor-made. Um, there is a portion that I will present today that's a sort of jugalbandi between the Mridangist and the dancer. And of course, kind of paying homage to the fact that I am a Mridangist myself, it was an interesting choice for Auntie to include that. Um, and, and then, of course, it's on Lord Ayyappa, which is very unique and rare. You typically don't see Dilanas or any songs based on Lord Ayyappa. Um, and, and on a personal note, Ayipa is very fond to me and my family. My father takes the Ayipa rhythm every year. So of course, this uh, means so much to me. So with that, I would love to show you the Tilana. Absolutely. I think I'm just so uh, excited to see this. <laughs> Tata 
Creativity with Tilana, um, how do we choreograph? Now, now we've presented items, Tilanas, that are we have learned from other gurus. How do we choreograph? What's our creative process? Um, for me, I love to, I like to mimic my, um, mimic the ragam, the way the singer sings in my movements. So it changes based off of what the ragam is. So if it's a gentler ragam, use more um, curves and um, just more bends and all of that and versus something that's more um, brisk paced. So like, you know, as a steady tempo um, and it's not when a singer sings, there aren't as many curves compared to a gentler ragam where you have, you know, um, like a space to show that. For like the ragams like Mohan and Kalyani, I felt, that you know, being a brisk paced, I would, you know, my approach would be to use more straight lines when I'm doing uh, adubas. So to further explain that, um, for me, anytime I dance, I love to envision the space around me as my canvas and my limbs and uh, my eyes, like my body as paint brushes. So I'm painting the space around me with energy. And that could even just be with, you know, a simple atomy bringing that sharpness versus something that's a little dull, you can see a clear contrast in like the energy that is brought to uh, the piece. Um, and absolutely, you're, you're precisely right. I'd love to watch you demonstrate it. Yeah, yeah. And so regarding gentler ragos, something like or if it's you know, something more linear, using and uh, that's mostly the that's like the basis of what I would use when I'm uh, during, in my creative process um, and similarly when um, paying attention to the major beats even when you're doing not to angle so that the elements of that pause that I was talking about earlier so that's it. And for Tilan, when you bring more of a softness, yet it's a uh, the balance between grace yet still having that strength in your hastas and your body. 
So it's not just about letting loose of everything, but tehiya, tehi, tehiya, tehi, tehiya, tehiya, tehi. So even in when you're giving salam, so not filling up too many beats and still keeping the beauty of the ragam, the way the singer sings, and also reflecting uh, the capabilities of the dancer and uh, the singer, all finding a good balance in that choreography. How about you, Aishu? Beautifully demonstrated, Rohita. I love to kind of, um, even with linear steps, how do you show the grace? I, I really enjoyed that. I think you're exactly right. You know, the raga plays such a role in our creative process. It's almost meditative. The, what, what I like to do is really close my eyes and envision what I'm trying to convey to the audience and what rasa ultimately is it. With the filana, I think the, the easily identifiable ones are energy that you're trying to convey, briskness, stillness in your adubus, um, of course, rhythmic complexity. Um, there's maybe not an abhinaya big portion, uh, only in the charanam or the sahityam, but typically like to convey that. Um, energy and that kind of feel as we culminate the, the margam or the kacheri. Um, of course, you'll notice uh, in the Sindhu Bhairavitilana, for example, there was an aradi that repeated over and over again. And I think I like seeing the parallel structure that is kind of mimicked after each punctuation mark-esque aradi. And it kind of shows a nice ending to each section. It happens in the Pallavi, it happens in the Anupallavi, of course, in the Charanam. Everything kind of ends with that and you end with an even more brisk out of these. So to kind of show you all that, again, you see a so you'll see that happen every time. And I think it kind of beautifully punctuates every um, kind of section. And uh, what I like to do in the Aradi is keep it as brisk and as energetic as possible because it's really the end of each piece as well as the end of your dance. So really bringing that energy is what I like to do. Absolutely, it gives a, I, one thing I love about uh, the Aradis in different Tilana is it, it gives a clear, um, it differentiates the parts, the sections in the structure of a Tilana. Right, so you have the Anupallavi and then the Anupallavi Charanam. There's a clear, between you know, all the jatis that you're doing, all the corvées, it's a clear finish. So you have a clear start and an end to what you're showing. You're I love that. You're exactly right. Yeah, and I like to, it to be very brisk, very kind of culminating in nature. Of course, the Dilana has all the aspects of a margam that you've done, right? It has dritta, it has stillness, it has abhinaya, it has uh, complex footwork. So all of that put together, is your tilana. And so kind of making, taking the best of all and putting it into one piece is how I typically like to approach it. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so Aisha, I have a question for you actually, um, regarding in our creativity process, right? So we have standardized syntax as well that we typically use. So how do you maintain um, creativity while you, you know, you're still keeping up with the Guru Parampara? I think that's passed that down to you, you know, through, you know, generations. Rohita, you're asking all the tough questions. This is a really, really hard one. How do you kind of create while also staying true to the art form is, I think, something we will have a lifelong journey figuring out because, of course, how do we innovate when what precedes us is tons and tons of years. There's history there. There's, um, you know, it, legend goes that it comes from the Natya Shastra and, and Lord Nataraja himself. So how do you create, how do you kind of um, embody what is so stagnant and stands true to the test of time? I think it's, it's a combination of really diving deep into what you are doing and perfecting and perfecting. I am, of course, just a student of Bharatanatyam. I have tons and tons more to go, tons of uh, kind of work to do with the guidance of my guru, um, as well as those who are very accomplished in this beautiful art form. So, so lots of work left, but I think it's a combination of being true to yourself, staying authentic to the art form, and creating by going back and looking at what was done. A good example is the karanas, right? That karanas are traced back 
years and years and now are being slowly incorporated, of course, with Padma Subramanian, have been incorporated in normal dance and everyday dance. So I think it's, it's only more and more to go from here. Absolutely, yeah, I totally agree. I, I don't think we'll ever have a final answer to that. Um, it's an unended question. You know, it's you, different answers from different artists. So um, I agree, it's, it's, you have to stay true to your art. Um, whatever, wherever you go, sticking to your roots is so important, right? Otherwise, it's just gonna be a melting pot of different styles and, you know, it's, you want to have one style dominant, but then have the ability to explore as well and uh, not let that exploration affect your, you know, individuality, your creativity, um, your like root style as a dancer. You're exactly right. I think I very much agree with you. It's definitely an opinion. Of course, everyone has their own opinions. I think mine is of the following that cross pollination is a very beautiful thing. We'll often see cross pollination happen with Kuchipudi and Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam and Odyssey is now becoming very big. Karanas are known to be more closely tied to the fluid form of Odyssey. So, so I think that there's so much um, cross pollination that does happen that is incredibly beautiful. Um, and I think it's just done the right way and it's going to take a lifelong process for me to figure out what works for me and what doesn't. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, totally agree. And on that note, I think, you know, talking on the lines of creativity, I think uh, Tilana discussions would be incomplete if we were not to discuss with the Garde Venkatakavi's masterpiece, the Kalinga Nardara Tilana. Um, of course, those that, that, that uh, are new to the Stilana, the Stilana explores the playful nature in which uh, Krishna dances uh, and fights Galia. Um, this is more, more or less, to me, it feels like a Padam because of how much um, Abhinaya and how much setting the stage there is involved in this song. Um, there, of course, is the usage of syllables. You'll also find syllables without any tune at all, which I find to be um, it kind of adds to the, the drama, if you will, of Krishna and Kaliya fighting. It's set to Gambira Nate, uh, Ragam, which could not be more apt. Krishna is the epitome of Gambiram in this beautiful piece. Um, the stage is set on the banks of the river in Vrindavan, where the gopis are afraid of getting their water, and the deers who come usually to drink the water are running away frightened because of Kaliya, and he's caused a big mess in Vrindavan. And Krishna, of course, is here to save the day. You'll notice in the fighting sequence that Krishna utilizes um, his own playful techniques with Kaliya as he eventually uh, overcomes him. Uh, Kaliya, of course, is a snake. So he uses his snake-like tendencies of perhaps slithering away or hypnotizing Krishna um, and other such kind of uh, snake-like tactics. So without further ado, I'd love to kind of present a portion of the Kalinga Nardana Dilana. This is just multiple parts compiled together into one part. Um, so by no means the whole Dilana, but would love to show you.
of the same Tilana, um, you know, diff across different art forms as well. Um, a lot of people love to use the, keep the Tilana as a Sanchari, somewhat Sanchari based, while others use more, you know, Nrittas and Jatis in between. And um, in the beginning, right, the, the Jatis at the very beginning before they actually meet, where they're, you know, still taunting each other. I loved how you showed the difference. Your body language was so different when, you know, uh, depicting the snake, even the Adivas, as compared to Krishna. He was more, you know, graceful and like, you know, playful. As compared to the snake, he it was just, it was a really beautiful contrast and I love that. Thank you so much. This was choreographed by Sri Apurva Jairaman and beautifully, beautifully done. So uh, regarding Tilana composers, actually, uh, apart from the popular Uttakada Tilanas, uh, I feel that we've recently seen many people presenting Tilanas composed by Maharaja Swadi Tirunal, um, one to name is Dhanashree Tilana, which I've, you know, again seen in Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, and Mohiniyattam. Um, also, uh, Sri Lalpuri Jairaman sir, uh, we have Mohana Kalyani, Yaman Kalyani, Behag Tilanas that are very uh, popular nowadays. And as well as Sri Balamurli Krishna sir, um, most popular Kadana Kutuhalam and Kuntala Varali, I would say. Uh, what do you say, Aishu? I think you're exactly right. Um, to explore Balamali Krishna a little bit more, I think what's incredibly interesting is you, you mentioned Kadana Kudukalam, Kuntala Varali, and of course the others. He's very playful in the way he composes the lyrics of it. Uh, you'll find that there's lots of swaram, and the swaram is very musical and very scaly, goes up and down the scale in Adohanam and Avarohanam. And the Kuntala Varali, particularly, he says the Raghav name, of course and says that Arohanam and Avarohanam in the Sahityam. He does the same in Kadara Kudukulam as well. So completely agree that composers 
really do influence our choice. It's, it influences our choice in deciding whether to sing for it or whether to dance for it. So really influences a lot of our decisions. Absolutely, I agree. Um, so I would love to um, demonstrate a small excerpt of uh, Raga Shri Tilana, uh, composed by Lal Puri, sir. Looking forward to it. I should you mind uh, stop sharing the computer sound? Thank Done. You. Tadaratani Tirana
Wow, 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 Rohita. I'm such a fan of yours. You're just such a fantastic dancer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, beautifully done. I mean, there's so much grace. It almost, I, I, I'm also, I love watching Vani Aunty dance as well. I felt like I saw a little bit of Vani Aunty when you were dancing. So beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> really, really enjoyed that, Rohita. Um, it's always such a pleasure hearing you sing and dance. You know, we've grown up watching each other perform and it's so important and so exciting for me to support my fellow artists. Of course, we're still budding and we're still, you know, knowing, understanding the, the fields that we're exploring. So support and, and love always for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so in, in the last minute we have here, you know, I just wanted to talk about what art means to us. Um, for me, you know, it's a sense of solace and strength. When I used to work 100 plus hours as an investment banker, I was at JP Morgan in Chicago, I was alone, didn't really have anybody with me. I found that I found I, I was closer and closer to dance in a way that I it was almost unrecognizable. And although I was away from family away from my gurus, I found that I was holding on to what I knew as as kind of home and, and art and dance and music have always been that for me. And so I think that's why we continue to perform and dance. It's almost infectious. We just want to hold on. Would you agree? Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, for me, um, especially dance has been, it's given me a sense of purpose in life. Uh, even, you know, when I was working or amidst like my crazy college schedules, right? Um, I mean, I've graduated now. I was working. I'm like on a break right now. But when I was in my college, I everything I was taking a full load because I had finished my undergraduate early, fast track to masters, finished that early, and all while like graduating high school early too. So it was, I was just like loading myself. So even through that, I felt dance is something I could come back to. You know, every time I came home, it helped me release whatever emotions I was going through that day. Or just, you know, it's just pure joy. You just get to let go and forget about everything that's happening in the world. And just, it's you in your space and just, you know, being in the moment with the music. You're absolutely right. It's something that no one can take away from us. And I, I, I pray that you and I continue to explore this beautiful art form. And it was so nice chatting with you today. I, I thoroughly enjoyed performing and singing with you. Same here, I choose. Um, I'm so glad we were able to collaborate. I mean, after knowing each other for so many years, I feel like we haven't, you know, worked on anything. And now through IFA, I mean, a huge thanks to IFA for bringing uh, about this series, Virtual Vibe series, um, giving a platform for all the young dancers out there. And um, I think for us, it was just it was just wonderful to coll collaborate with you. Thank you. Likewise, Rohita, you said it right. You took the words out of my mouth. I, I, I pray for more opportunities like this for us to collaborate, for folks uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex to collaborate as well. Um, with that, I can hand it back to the IFA coordinators. Many thanks for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank, thank you all for joining the second, the third virtual vibes brought to you by Indian Fine Arts Academy of DFW. Uh, during this pandemic, all of us learn to reinvent ourselves as artists and also as resikas. And uh, this is one of the fine examples. And uh, I'm uh, simply amazed watching these two um, I mean, kids. I mean, I, I know I saw them as uh, uh, saw them in the Arangetram 2013. Both of them have done, and I've been to both of them. And uh, I'm incredibly surprised how much you have uh, actually grown since that day and uh, no no wonder your gurus are very very proud of you and uh, they always rave about you and i hear about you guys it's it's nice to have both of you participate today and uh, i was taking so much notes while you're actually talking <laughs> i got to learn a lot uh, about Tilana and the structure and all that i know i can uh, I can proudly uh, give a lecture demonstration somewhere else. Not a demonstration, only lecture. But for the demonstration, I need people like you. I'm nowhere near you. And uh, most, more than anything else, you know, uh, I, I, I'm really amazed at your humility that both of you have. Uh, despite all the things that you do, balancing all your work and also your careers and uh, you know, continuing education in the career as well as continuing education in the arts, right? So how do you pursue that? And it's, it's amazing and you are an inspiration for 
Uh, many of the younger kids who are learning uh, the arts right now, and um, I, here I wanted to point out that uh, art doesn't mean that you know that eight adavus are done and you're done, right? So because there's there's an ocean, the same eight adavus can be done in so many different ways. The same seven seven notes that you must have learned are sung in so many different ways, and same beats are actually shown in so many different ways. And how you have shown that. That lucid explanation of uh, the concept of Kilana. I, I really liked your explanation, and uh, 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 thank thank you so much uh, for being an inspiration for all. As you may have figured out, the panelists today are uh, two of the finest talents in Indian classical music and dance. Aishwarya is a dancer, vocalist, and rhythm player, while Rohita is adept at dance, music, and a, also a natuvanar uh, for dance. Virtual Vibes features some of the performing artists and those who are trained outside India, an opportunity of uh, many of us to learn how they understand and imbibe the arts, and of course, continue with the, in the arts. We have this wonderful performing artist who gave us insights into how they interpret the learning of the arts. This is not a platform to just come and perform, but a platform to interact with each other and share with us their knowledge and their understanding. So this is an opportunity for many teachers to see how they can approach teaching Indian classical arts for the students outside India. It is also a learning experience for parents. There is an ocean of learning in our classical arts if they can provide the right environment for their kids. We would love to see more such musicians and dancers show their passion and inspire many more to pursue the passion. We are getting a lot of requests from many of our IFA followers to take part in the virtual vibes, and we are excited to bring our next session in November and please stay tuned to our announcements with another set of artists. I would like to remind all our members that Navaratri's uh, concert series by our uh, resident musicians of Dallas uh, is going to be there pretty soon in October uh, during the Navaratri time, obviously. And uh, uh, please like our Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and become members of our vast classical music and dance community of Dallas area. As well as uh, today, I'm, I'm actually very uh, thrilled to see um, many of them join from all over the world. Actually, some of the musicians and dancers, performing artists who have, part of, who have been there. And I wish that these, uh, some, someday we can, uh, like uh, Rohita and Aishwarya have mentioned, someday you can be face to face. And once this uh, thing goes off, we should have a session like this and panel discussion and demonstration session live with both of you on the stage, and I would love to see many of the artists coming forward with it. Thank you all for tuning in today and look forward to all your support for Indian Classical Arts and Indian Fine Arts Academy in all our future events. Please do sign up for membership of our organization as we are bringing more exciting events in future, and that's, that really supports a lot for us, and thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Thanks, Thank you so much.